continue to order which everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Anyone wish to speak on this matter? Just stop. It's up to the microphone and uh, 
to their name and address. Seeing no one, I make a motion to close the public. I second. Roll call. that were at the library, they have been moved to the Acme. So I just wanted everybody to know that. They are still in town, but they have been moved to the Acme. Our officers have been very active in arresting juveniles for curfew violations, vandalism, drug offenses, and underage drinking. If you see a violation, please call 911. You do not have to have an emergency in order to call 911. This is how our police officers are dispatched. So if you don't have an emergency, but you see a violation of some kind going on, please call 911, report it. You don't have to have an officer come to your door if you don't want them to. So please, I, I really want your cooperation in that regard. Uh, officers have been very active with regard to panhandling and people going around town soliciting without a permit. And of course, they've been watching out for improper behavior. Again, we ask you to cooperate. Call 911 when you see a violation. I believe that we're supposed to have a crossing guard hired, Mr. Benjamin Calcott. Uh, will we be doing that tonight? We'll be okay, and uh, the other one we'll be waiting on? We have uh, some concerns, I think, with the solicitor and administrator. Okay, okay. Um, <clears throat> the fire department has been very active. Of course, Fire Prevention Week is next week. The fire company will have an open house on the 10th, and they want everyone to come out because our new ambulance is going to be on display. I stopped on a Sunday afternoon when the uh, doors were open, and I had a private tour of our ambulance. It is fabulous. The equipment inside is state-of-the-art. 
Uh, the men have been using it since the weekend, and I understand it was on uh, the field on Friday night for the, for the uh, football game. So I just wanted you to be aware that we will have the new ambulance on display, and it is a great piece of equipment. To year to date, fire fees and EMS fees collected $244,445.12. Every time that ambulance leaves the garage, leaves the firehouse, it's a bill that goes to the insurance company. And as you can see, it is making a lot of money. Not only is it serving our community, but it's funding its operations on its own. So we're so happy that things are working out and that we were able to buy this ambulance for them. Uh, don't forget, Fire Prevention Week next week. Open house at the firehouse, October 10th from 7 to 9. Everyone, everyone should be there. That's my report. Thank you, Elena. And I feel for the events. Thank you, Mary Council. On my engineering, I will refer to our engineers for the report and to my reporting at, at our caucus meeting. Um, I'm going to um, tell you a little bit about the green team. The green team will be meeting down at Green Acres on October 14th at 9 a.m. to discuss future plans, including our grants, and we will walk and talk together. Our application for sustainability was sent in, and we are now waiting to see if we receive our bronze star. Our running annual Halloween party scheduled, is scheduled for Thursday, October 31st from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Harry Reeves Center. It will begin with the dance and end with the Halloween contest for all age groups. So come dress and enjoy the night. Gardeners will be sub supplying us with candy apples, and as always, their generosity goes far and beyond, and the borough appreciates their kindness. So thank you, Wendy and Jim. Ed, uh, you didn't attend the BOE meeting, but I did, so if you don't mind, I'm going to do some reporting on it, since there are a lot of things that were important. Um, there were two resignations. Joanne Augustine, business administrator, will be leaving November 15th. She has been there for two years. She replaced uh, Kelly Brazelton. Earl Vassilo will be the new interim uh, business administrator, effective October 14th to June 30th. He will work at a rate of $500 a day and not to exceed three days. Other resignations was the business office payroll administrator, Lori Gondra, who is leaving on October 4th. Secretary Dottie Bovia, she is retiring, at, actually she retired yesterday, and Pat Wilson has replaced her position. The BOA, the BOE uh, also discussed the concerns it has with the 114 townhouses that could possibly come to Runnymede and its impact it will have on the Runnymede school districts. They will be sending a representative to the planning board meeting on October 9th at 7 p.m. Can the schools handle this increase? That is the question. At 1.5 children increase, that would increase 171 more students and that they now have over 800 students, so this is a great concern for them. This has been a very this has been a very active year for our school district. We have lost and gained many people in all departments. New administrators, new principals, new vice principals, new hires, and new positions with increases in salaries. The BOA discussed the application of an ROD grant. The ROD grant will help with the district's long-term facility plan that includes roof repairs, masonry restorations, window and exterior doors, and a kitchen at Mary Vaults. The district will receive 55.33% state aid for these various projects. The local share for the district will be around $1.8 million. The district has $1 million in capital reserve and will have around 18 months to come up with the rest, which is $800,000. This ROD grant comes from the New Jersey Department of Education. Um, other than this, I report progress. Thank you. Did they uh, say how they were going to come up with the 800000 uh, No, but they, uh, it was stated that they don't want to burden the taxpayers. So I, I guess maybe fundraisers were, you know, they didn't settle. They didn't settle. Okay. They didn't settle. Okay. 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 Okay.
to love money. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah
to expand on um, the personal action for tonight. Uh, we are going to request that you table the appointment of the special officer to at this point in time until we get a written certification of any employment encumbrances that would come along for training with the, the employee. So we'll reach out to their municipality. Um, I'll present that cost to the personnel committee and we can consider those costs versus the cost of sending a new employee to the academy. So there's benefits on both sides, just depends on what they So uh, hopefully we can bring that back to you for November. Um, also, I wanted to let you know that we've just started receiving, uh, as part of the state building project, we just started receiving our energy performance benchmarks. Uh, I have the one for this building that I uh, have a chance to review. I also have just received the one for Harry Williams building, and I will get a copy of these to you. Uh, for, with regards to this building, um, basically it, it's in line with the national average, but for an office building, it, it says that it's a little on the high side. Um, so we'll have to take a look at that and see, you know, I'm sure they'll help us with the recommendations on how we can make it more efficient. And I can tell you just in the past year alone, when this room is not used, the lights are off and the air is actually off. It's not even set. So I mean, that's why sometimes it takes a few minutes to catch up. Uh, we've been trying to make sure that the lights are out, things of that nature. So some of the stuff is easy. Um, one of the points on the Harry Williams building, uh, just something that I picked up, a 10% reduction in the cost could save us 2,500 a year. So while if we can achieve that by turning lights off, that's great. If we'd have to spend you know, $100,000 to achieve that 10%, it, you, know, you have to look at the cost benefit. So that's why we'll analyze them and sit down with uh, the engineers and, and the reps from sustainability. But I just want to point out that those there's reports that we've authorized are, are basically coming in to help out there. So, um, also, one of the items that has to be done this month and was not going to be walked on tonight. I spoke with the, the director and the finance committee, and we're trying not to walk things on so that everyone has a chance to look at them. Um, we do have our best practices inventory. Um, I've done a preliminary review of all of our yeses, noes, babies, and perspectives, and we are two points over, so there's no reduction. But we really need to sit down because what they're doing is they're, they're basically making the, the walls come in closer and closer each year and there's some things that are policy driven um, that we might want to address to make sure we can continue to, to give yes answers and not have a reduction in uh, state aid because we didn't need a yes or a no on the report. So uh, I'm sure the finance committee is going to be meeting probably this week or early next week and we can go over that there. So, Do we have to still have a meeting with the uh, school board? Do we still have to read them all the, the, the meeting with the school board, while it's still a good practice, uh, and with the regional, so that the, we know as a whole how we're going to have an impact on the residents with the tax rate, um, that is not an item that's on the checklist any longer. Um, so they, they've kind of changed it each year. And you know, what, a few of the things are, and it's even a legal issue for both the, the HIP and GIF and for our solicitor, have we RFP'd our health benefit? Well, I mean, you know, what is the cost of RFP and our benefits? Is that something we can do in-house? Because we're with the GIF. We, we think that based on our analysis that we have a good deal, but you lose the point if you do RFP. So it's kind of absolute. It's a yes or no. So there's, there's questions like that that definitely deal with policy issues that we're going to have to, to consider for a while. So, but uh, that, that's an item that's going to have to be addressed, and it'll have to be addressed prior to the council. So, so. I think a meeting with the school board was, was positive. Uh, I, I think that, that, that certain questions can be answered. Yeah. Right. So, that's it. With that, I'll stand on the report from the yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, so I think in particular, a couple of items that came across my desk this morning, which I'll be getting to look into in the situation with the county. We have a first stage. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I distributed my staff report prior to last week's caucus meeting. A few things I'd like to highlight. They're a very busy month, but I'll try to go through these quickly. Um, the fiscal year 2014 state aid applications that were due September 20th were submitted to the state. We'll take a few months to get back to them, but uh, hopefully that will be a successful application for read out in phase three. The current Fiscal year 2013 project for the reconstruction of Reed Avenue Phase 2. The uh, 
contractor did work plan work construction for the base bid and the two alternates. Um, I have the contracts back and we'll give the voice after the meeting. And we also submitted the initial payment voucher to the state so we get our 75% of front money. The pre-construction meeting is scheduled for next Tuesday at 10 o'clock. Uh, Lambert says it's going to be starting the next day on Wednesday the 9th. It's a 45 day contract. Uh, so that would have substantial completion at November 10th, Monday the 25th. So hopefully we'll get that job going in the next few months. The baseball field improvements at the RYAA, where we're looking to install some handicap uh, parking spaces and also some sidewalk. We were soliciting quotes from four contractors. Uh, the quote threshold was $36,000, which is what we were anticipating the budget to be. Unfortunately, the two quotes we did get were higher. Lambert was at 49 and 490, and GWP was at 55, 187. So you can't take any action on those. So I'm going to work with the engineering construction committee to see what we do. One thing we were looking into was going on shared services with Belmar. We have not gotten prices back from them, but that's another thing we're looking into. And we'll go from there. If we have to put it out to bid for a springtime construction, that might be the way to go. But we'll see what we hear from Belmar. Um, the Earl Hall emergency generator, I just gave draft plans to the engineering committee and the public works so that they can review them. We'll get together. If everybody's okay with what we're proposing to do, we can advertise that for bids as well. Um, the Reed Avenue and Orchard Avenue project was just completed. Um, we have a punch list for that. Landberg, now to come back into town, will take care of the punch list items. And also, at next caucus, we'll talk about the mid block crosswalk. We have to do a first reading for the ordinance to establish the mid block crosswalk. We did? Yeah. Yeah, it's very we did we, we do the second one as well? Facilities. I have a tentative schedule. They are the pile for the floor is ordered. It's supposed to be in next week. Uh, assuming it takes a week for the tile to get here, a week to install it. We have one more week for the fixtures, and then one week to address punch list. So we should be done by October 31st. Oh, that's wonderful. Just schedule it. The original one. The original. One. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. April, but then the weather pushed it back, and then we had some change orders that pushed it back. Over change orders. Pardon? Over change orders. We added some security. Um, we added heat to make it a year round instead of being a three, um, three season facility. It's now a year round facility. And um, that's the major thing was the security. Oh, the doors are automatic on timers now. Uh, security was an issue. Um, we're making it year round. We just want to have uh, better uh, security down there. How much are we changing? I don't know. No. 20. Pardon me? 20? 30? I believe it was in, in the 30 to 35. Is that what helped the project? We had weather during the January. Pretty much concludes my report unless anybody else has any questions. I have a question. What did I tell you? That's okay. About the enclosures. 
we did kind of table that with the garbage enclosure and the R Y because right. I didn't get a chance to discuss it with everybody else, like with Parks. I didn't get a chance to discuss it with Mike. And I haven't done anything for That's the time. Right. That last My month. concern was, I mean, part of the issue with the, the deal was that Mark was looking at the enclosures that we were going to put the dumpsters in. My concern was is if things move forward with any changes in the R Y, I don't want to have the dumpsters enclosures put in if they're not going to be in a place that's going to be conducive to the changes. Yeah, I don't want to put them up and then be like, oh yeah, that's kind of important that makes the thing. So that, that would should be a concern. I have yeah. a copy of Mike's concept the concept plan would work with Mike and the parks and rec. Okay. And we may look at that and yeah. see where the, the trash is. I mean I'm not opposed to doing it. I mean I'm definitely okay. we can get together a you're in a committee meeting. I'm just trying to think a little bit ahead because it seems, you know, I don't want it to have to be a problem. Okay. Yeah, because we want to address it in a minute. Yeah. Okay. Now I personally took the trash out of there one day. It was an inconvenient uh, current location. It, it seems like it's on the opposite side where all the people gather. If we're going to do the handicap parking area and loading area, you would assume that handicap parking loading and maybe the I would hate to lose the parking spot. I would hate to put the money out. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I second. Roll call. Mrs. Pazio. Yes. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mr. White. Yes. And Mr. Pazio. Yes. Bye bye. Bye bye. Resolution is now adopted. There's a request for authorization for the mayor to sign the memorandum of understanding between the state of New Jersey and the Barrow Water Review regarding emergency management. Let me read this. I make motion to approve. I second. All those in favor? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I make a motion to make the amount of I second that motion. Roll call. Mrs. Pazio. Yes. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Mrs. Moore. Yes. Mr. White. Yes. And Mr. Rapala. Yes. Bye bye. Bye. This is the good welfare portion of the meeting. Anyone wish to speak, please come to the microphone. State your name and address. services at the Runnymede Inn and Suites right on 9th, uh, 9th Street and I had the pleasure, pleasure and the privilege of meeting you all uh, last uh, April uh, when we came into the town and uh, since that time we've been involved in the um, 4th of July parade we had a float in the parade which was a lot of fun and we also were involved in the uh, national night out that you had in the summer so uh, I also want to introduce uh, my wife Natalie is here and uh, some of our leaders from our church from Faith Fellowship that have come tonight. And um, if I could, I'd like to pass out some of these, um, uh, just some information to you guys tonight. Thank you. Um, we're, we're really privileged and um, it's such a privilege and an excitement for us to be a part of um, of this town and of this city. And, um, you know, the, the vision of our, of our church and of our ministry is basically, um, we have services on Sundays and we have other meetings, but um, our desire is not really uh, just to be having services on Sundays for the people that are involved in our congregation. But um, I can just read to you from, um, it's in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse seven. It says, and seek the peace and the welfare of the city which I have caused you to be carried away, and pray for the, to the Lord for it. For in the welfare of the city in which you live, you will have welfare also. And so um, that's basically the vision of, of what we believe in our, in our church, is to be a part of the community and to help as best we can. And so tonight, um, we've come here um, to make a proposal uh, to the team guys and to the town. Um, and first of all, we are a non-denominational church that, that's been in existence since uh, 2002. And um, what we are proposing um, to the town is um, for the town of Runnemede to partner with us to help eliminate hunger uh, in South Jersey by providing a temporary or a permanent site to distribute food to local residents and surrounding communities. Uh, this uh, would be once a month through our Joseph's Storehouse food pantry. Um, we have previously had a food pantry in the church that we were in in Sioux, New Jersey, and um, we received uh, donations from the uh, Food Bank of South Jersey, uh, local stores, farmers, and individuals. And before moving here to Renemy, we served uh, close to 100 families every month, uh, distributing over 7,000 pounds of food per month. Um, currently, we have a $1,500 grant waiting for us at the uh, Food Bank of South Jersey, as well as monthly financial partners. Um, and another source of our funds is uh, through, uh, we do what's, uh, we started last year, what's called our Dodge Hunger uh, Dodgeball Tournament at the River, Riverwinds. And uh, that was really a lot of fun, and we raised funds through that, and we'll be having uh, another one of those uh, 
in November. Um, what we're requesting tonight is, uh, uh, is to provide space uh, to accommodate about 100 chairs and 10 8-foot tables. Um, our set, and our setup is similar to a grocery store where we allow clients to shop for items. We don't just hand bags to people, but we actually allow people to walk through like they would walk through a grocery store and they pick out items and we have uh, volunteers, we have young people uh, that, that volunteer from local high schools and colleges and people from other churches that help carry uh, the food out to help the people. And this way, the people feel as if they're, they're very much valued and, and they're cared for. And so um, we, have, uh, we have plenty of volunteers to do that. Um, so um, what we're looking for is, is having a permanent site that would not require setup and breakdown each month would, would be ideal. But if we had to do that and it was temporary, um, that would be great. That would be awesome. And um, basically what we would, would be doing during that time, we would arrive at about 9 a.m to set up the tables and the chairs and to unpack the deliveries that would come. And we would arrange the food and prepare the registration uh, area. Uh, the doors would open at 1 p.m. and the food would then be distributed from 2 to 6 p.m. Uh, while the supplies last. Uh, the cleanup should take approximately one hour and therefore we would be finished at around 7 p.m. So it would start at 9 a.m. and we would be done by 7 p.m. Uh, one day uh, every month. We have uh, plenty of volunteers. We had anywhere between 20 and 30 volunteers that came from various areas to help us. We had uh, a group from the Rowan University that came to help us from a uh, local high school. They would ask us to sign their sheets uh, as they would volunteer. It was a group of, uh, of great young people that helped us. So we have plenty of volunteers uh, that are waiting, actually waiting for us to reopen uh, our food pantry, which was a great success in the Seward area. Um, what I'm asking, what we're asking is uh, we're looking to get started, um, uh, if we could, a week before Thanksgiving uh, this November. Um, in order to meet the target date, we, um, we have to submit the location, the hours of operation, and our food order to the uh, Food Bank of South Jersey by uh, October 15th. And we already have, we'll get the word out to various people in the community, uh, in local schools, and uh, we'll advertise it. Um, but I think first and foremost, um, what, what I wanted to share with you tonight is that the face of hunger has changed um, in the United States and in New Jersey. Uh, we no longer are feeding people that are on food stamps or SSI or low income or uh, that are unemployed. Uh, today there are actually two working adults in a household and, that still find themselves in need of food assistance at the end of every, each and every month. And, um, According to studies that were done by the uh, Food Bank of South Jersey, one out of seven residents in Runnymede find themselves at a food pantry for assistance. So that's uh, 1,254 people. They've estimated at a population of over 8,400 people. So um, you know, we plan to cater to the overflow of people around uh, beyond the 50 families a month that uh, the Trinity Lutheran Church is now serving. We visited their food pantry and they're doing a really fine job. We really appreciate what they're doing. So we're here to, to compliment and just to add to what they've already been doing. And um, so our desire is to feed people in this local area so that it, they don't need to use their limited funds to travel to the neighboring towns to get food. And, um, and then lastly, we're not just a food pantry. Uh, with the time between registration and food dis distribution, uh, we plan to offer workshops in uh, Victorious Living, we plan to host job fairs and health fairs. Uh, with a more permanent site, we, we're, we're planning on offering English as a second language, classes to become a, a certified GED testing center, and also a clothing distribution center. Uh, all these plans are only the beginning of our ultimate goal to, to build the South Jersey Dream Center in this area of South Jersey. And so uh, what we're looking to do, we're looking to get a, a facility that we can use uh, in the area here that we could use once a month, either on a permanent or on a temporary basis. And um, we would use that as our site. Uh, and we would want to target before Thanksgiving if we could to get that for the need. There's a very large need around Thanksgiving. We would provide turkeys and all the fixings to the people that would need help as long as they could last. We, we would probably look for a goal from 50 to 100 turkeys to give away to 100 families. And so on. Um, uh, that's really our desire, and our goal to be a blessing to the community, just to supplement uh, what, what you're already doing in the community. 
and it would be a real privilege for us to be able to do that. So um, that's why we're, we're looking for a space to, to, to help us to, to help you guys, to help the city. So. Procedurally, just so you know, what will happen is, is that the appropriate committee probably help the presentation. We'll get a look into that, report back to the board at our caucus meeting, which is at the end of the month. Um, and then the board, the council that decides to move forward can adjust that as a resolution at our next regular meeting, which will be the first Tuesday in November. Okay. I mean, procedurally, that's the way it has to work. Right. We're not putting it off, but that's how things have to happen. First through committee for now, analysis report that the whole council can discuss it at their caucus and then move forward with <coughs> resolution. So I guess Mr. White we should get in touch with you. Okay, yeah, so you're a part of the commission. Yeah. Okay, and I, I've been in contact with you. Yeah.
that it, once we build the wall, I understand. The days that they go, oh, I'm sorry, we should have given 12. No, days and days. I understand that. But I met with Mr. Capatis and the gentleman from Belmar upon this whole trash negotiation, and we discussed that where the dumpster sits down on Broadway, it's a perfect spot. Okay. Here's what happens: when the dumpster was up before. Before the RY was responsible for the dumpsters, the borough at one time was. This goes back about five years. And the dumpster sat on Elm Avenue near where the bleachers currently are. And I'm going to tell you something, what happened? The whole borough used it for trash and deer caucuses. And our parents couldn't sit there because it smelled so bad. So let's put the dumpster in a convenient spot for everybody and everyone's going to use it. And then we can't, we can't even have our, it was, it was gross. So where they are, it was yuck. If you recall, this so those uh, this discussion of having right. the public meetings, the trash cans had their meals, they weighed about 500 pounds. I do it. And I do it. I get it. Was, uh, I, I get it. But let's, let me say, where the dumpsters are is incredibly feasible for everything that we need up there. And I think the sooner we get them in close, the more likely they are to be filled with everything that's going in there right now. Yeah, okay. okay. Just so you know. Um, the third thing is, who um, who is the municipal line? Okay, so I came to you several months ago and said, under former administration, we got a municipal um, alliance uh, grant of $500 per year. And I was so looked into it. And I don't know that anybody ever looked into it, but then I came again a couple months later and I was told to put it in writing. And now I've put it in writing, and it was forwarded to that person, and I'm still not responding to it. Please, I mean, understand something. Out of 300 and something children playing running in sports, I have 21 that cannot afford to play. Are they playing? They are. And they are, and a lot of those 21, I have people that have stepped up in the community, but not enough community members have it to even help out with the other. That money went to at-risk kids. And at-risk kids, anyone who can't afford to play, I can't tell you how far that $500 went. It went towards everything required to let these kids play. So we've gone without it now for two years. Can, is there any way to tell is now in the, in, uh, she went to the class and uh, it was huge. Life. It was a huge help for many years. And I only walked into it, you know, I, this is only my second year as president, but I've been involved for eight years. I watched that money really truly help people. And for two years now, it hasn't been there to truly help people. Unfortunately, we do have a good, you know, a great community in terms of stepping up. But when you're looking to fund 21, that's a huge, you know, outreach. So, uh, Please. I mean, we're keeping the kids off the streets. Can't you help us do that? Please. Let me just say this, and I totally agree with you. It's definitely something that should be addressed. I am attempting to meet with Ms. Betteridge. Um, we did have a meeting set up last week. She couldn't make it. I was a meeting yesterday. She couldn't make it. Uh, we're looking for something towards the end of this week. I do have some meetings uh, earlier in the week, but. We will, be, we will be addressing it, and, and she is definitely going to be looking at it. Okay. I, mean, I, 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 I confirm that I will follow up if she doesn't. Okay. All right? I mean, I can forward you the email. That yes. I, that in writing yes. Please. 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 I will do that. I want that. I, I wasn't, no one addressed me. As, okay. As director, she comes under me, okay. and I was not given that um, okay. correspondence. I will gladly forward it to you. Please. Um, and on that note, I know that that program that we speak of actually did a lot of things each year. And I'm just wondering over the last couple of years, has it done anything since it dropped us? What has it done? Because I'm sure that money hasn't just gone away. Do you know what I mean? She was just appointed. Okay. She was just appointed. Okay. So, uh, pardon me? Yes. 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 Yeah. She was so, just she was just appointed. So all right. I think it was in July. Yes. She was appointed at the beginning of the year. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, well, we haven't paid it yet. I don't believe. We, 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 all we did is we, uh, following the program rules, we set up an ordinance that allowed us to do this. Well, we haven't really done much, I don't think, this year. But that's the problem. The plan, if you recall, though, the plan is actually done the previous year. I'm just She's not. She's not. And I, I don't want the misconception that the program is with the schools and there's other things taking place. Uh, I, I will say this, that I think that there should be a private meeting to discuss the reasons it's right. not being funded, because I think it's, it's bigger than that. But um, uh, I think we, I we are the yeah. so, right yeah. beginning. That, that's fine. And if, if there's a request for funding, it should be in writing. Um, and I did it. But here's the thing. We'll look into it, and then 
Uh, I can tell you this, that, that that memo was ordered to me, and it's on the agenda for the meeting. It's okay. Okay. All right. I appreciate it. Thank who's, you. Who did you send it to? Joyce, because I didn't know. And Joyce, listen, okay. I'm going to tell you. Oh, uh, Within about, I didn't know who to send it to, okay. because, again, I addressed the whole group and was told to look into it, and no one got back to me. And then when I brought it up a couple months later, I was told to put it in right, or no, I was told to um, put it in writing. So I finally, when I looked at the numbers and saw just how many it helped versus how many are in need right now, I put it in right. Joyce got back to me within about four minutes, I'll tell you that. So I, I can honestly tell you, I sent it to Joyce, and it was immediately handled. But with that or who it gets forwarded to, I think that's where the lack of. Yes, yes. So I thank you very much. And with regard to Harry Williams, I can't tell you, it's incredible. The communication is wide open, and it truly is uh, very beneficial. Did, did, uh, last year, did, did you receive any funds last year for this program? We did not. Did not, this, not this two years. And, and how many, so what did, how did you handle those kids last year? Um, we actually self funded. We have ongoing balances for some people, but it's fine. I mean, you, you're going to have that. I understand. Yes, it's just, you know. Okay. Thank you. On the on the on the new woods for on the paying for the money to be paid for maintenance and wind up. Thank you. Uh, the borough, I think the attitude has been that well, it's not the attitude. The fact is, the borough that is the borough problem. Yeah, but well, I'm not saying about the lease we have. I mean, now we should take care of maintenance. Well, one of the things that the do, do does the borough have the our borough guys have to be? I think they have to be somewhere. I can answer. You have to ask the borough guys. Excuse me, Mr. White. They yeah. do. I personally gave them to them. Right, just, yes. Well, they have to pay. Don't they have a key to the shed too? Yes, it's all one key. It's a master oh, system. It's oh, called a C key. Like the shed, yeah. I gave one to um, Mr. Ritz, and then I gave one to another employee, so that if they were ever separated, that somebody does have access to everything. Right, it's this gentleman's turn. Now. It's okay. One house. Uh, Michael Menz, 286 Sunset Road. Um, giving a very brief background, I happen to live uh, next to a person who runs a landscaping business out of his house, and as such, he runs small engines. Uh, excessively. This is not a once a week mowing the yard. This is from Memorial Day to Labor Day, by 7 a.m. to 8.30 a.m., 4 p.m. to 7 p.m., five or six days a week. So I read the running meet code 265-5, no persons shall make the blah, 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 noise and breach of peace. That's a little vague. I then further read NJAC 7-29, which actually gives decibel limits of 65 decibels. So my question is, next spring, when this incessant noise starts, and I come in with a noise dosimeter reading from a NIST standard, do I present it to this counselor, or do I get NJDEP to help enforce this code? Because I'm, I've been on Sunset Road 10 years, and we are ready to move. And now, like, the home is my castle, and I'm going to fight. I've been keeping my family settled for a while. And I tried to have a civil communication with my neighbor who said, it's my property, I can do what I want. And that's where I had to stop the well, conversation. Your question. Uh, if you believe that your neighbor or anybody else is violating either a municipal ordinance or a state statute, it is certainly your right to file a formal complaint through the municipal court system with the municipal court. Okay. That is a criminal or quasi-criminal process. Okay. okay. What you're describing. Okay. There may be other issues in terms of municipal uses and all that other thing that you would talk to the code officer about that okay. as well. But the council is not... Uh, I wouldn't use a fact finding issue. Right, right. I didn't know yeah, where that's else to go. That's good. It's where you should come to find within that. Uh, but that's, that would be your process. Municipal clerk, if you believe there's a violation of either a municipal ordinance or a state statute, even if it's a DEP. Okay. Uh, okay. That, that's been 99% chance that all of that's going to get heard in the municipal court. That would be Joyce Municipal Court? No, the court court. I'm sorry. Court court. Okay. Okay. Yes. okay. I, 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 I did. I probably did. I just no. don't no. uh, And then the other issues may be, may be zoning issues, so you may want to talk to the zoning officer 
about whether or not this is a municipal use of the property and things of that nature. I don't know one way or the other, but we have a dysfunctional street. I just trying to, <laughs> just trying to keep moving along and be a nice guy, but I'm now getting fire trains on my back. Well, we so. appreciate you. Have you spoken to our code enforcement official? Not recently. Not recently. Well, well, you're familiar with the street. There's some that's politics that's or some eccentric behavior. I think I know the gentleman all that. I would definitely speak to So the court clerk. The court clerk and also the senator. And the code. And the code. 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 The Okay, just changing hats real quick, speaking for St. Teresa Sports Committee. I do want to say it's, it's a pleasure working with it's Maria. A pleasure. I've said your name in this country before. Uh, so it's been working out well. We spoke today. We're not at St. Teresa crazy about the $25 a night, but seeing that you have to raise $800,000 compared to $25 a night on a couple of big sales. Just, uh, <laughs> so I just want to end on that. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no one else, I make a motion to close the final portion of the meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Make a motion to adjourn. Aye.